Hi everybody, NZ Tech Freak here once again for AndroidNZ.net and what we're bringing you today is yet another video showcasing this tablet on the bottom left hand side of the screen, the Asus Transformer Prime and a few different connectivity options you have at your disposal with this tablet so obviously what you can see in front of you is the tablet is connected uh, to my HDTV and that connection is happening via micro HDMI of course that's the HDMI connection of choice for Asus with the transformer this time around the original transformer of course having a mini HDMI cable so they've gone even smaller this time but as you can see the net effect is that it still looks great when it's mirror it up to your external monitor or in this case HD television. Now for this first bit of the connectivity demo what I'm going to show is basically just web browsing on your HD television via your transformer and the little twist I wanted to add was showcasing uh, Bluetooth keyboard and mouse connections to the transformer while you do this. Of course the transformer like most of the stock Android devices for the last year or so will support Bluetooth HID devices so that's the human interface um, profile for Bluetooth and so many many different uh, Bluetooth keyboards and mice will work. In this case what I'm going to be using is this really excellent uh, Bluetooth keyboard made by Logitech. Now this one's made specifically for Android 3.0 and above tablets. I can confirm it works perfectly well with uh, the Galaxy Nexus and both the Samsung Galaxy S2 and Galaxy Note. Um, although some of the shortcut keys won't work on those devices. Of course they do work on tablets such as the Asus Prime which this keyboard is specifically made for. Um, I'm also using the Logitech uh, Bluetooth mouse for Android tablets. Again, there's nothing special about the mouse. It's a Bluetooth hidden mouse. It will also work with the Nexus, the Note, and the Galaxy S2, and presumably all of Samsung's upcoming handsets at the very least. Uh, now, really nice thing about that uh, tablet keyboard is it has shortcuts uh, for things like media control, media playback and of course the fact that it's a keyboard so here we are in the browser and we're going to search up androidnz.net and head there and hopefully you can tell with the keyboard and mouse this is just a much more natural experience than what you can get on the tablet as good as the tablet browser is uh, and of course you have the advantage here of looking at it on a 42 inch display rather than the diminutive display of the tablet as such. Uh, so this is a really excellent way to browse and to do other things on your HD television as well. Now I wanted to move on from there and show you a more productivity sort of oriented um, activity that you can do. And this one here is going to be, I'm going to use a different keyboard. This is a combination keyboard and mouse from Logitech. And what you can see right in front of the screen there is the Logitech unifying wireless receiver. So that's what the USB mouse and keyboard combined in one are going to be communicating to the Prime through. Uh, and now it's great news actually that these Logitech unifying devices work because there's a lot of them. So basically you're spoiled for choice of which devices um, from Logitech with the unifying thing that you can use here with the Prime. This is keyboard itself, as you can see the touchpad works just as you would expect. Um, and like the previous Bluetooth keyboard, it has a lot of shortcuts. Um, this one also has some controls uh, to go to the home screen and also to control uh, things like media, volume and that sort of thing. And they work even though this is actually designed primarily for PC. So as you can see there, shortcut keys are all working, um, which is rather nice. Of course some of the other shortcuts and so forth on the keyboard won't work here with the Prime, but then it's not designed for that either. So anything you do get is a bonus. And what I was going to do is show you here a remote desktop session. So what I'm going to do is connect to my home laptop and I can hear it overheating behind me. It's getting a bit long in the tooth now. And I'm using Splashtop HD here, which for my money is the best uh, remote desktop software for Android, primarily for the fact that, apart from being easy to use and set up and actually quite speedy, uh, it also does a few other things that the others don't. It does sound, although the quality of the sort of sound streaming you'll get with it is very dependent on your up and download speeds on both the receiving device and the laptop itself. Uh, 
but also because it handles external mouse and keyboard inputs perfectly, including the dock for the Transformer. Now I don't yet have a dock for the Prime, but I do have one for the original Transformer, and it works perfectly with Splashtop HD, whereas it falls over with everything else. So what you can see in the background is just me browsing with it. Um, Multi-touch, so two-point touch, scrolling up and down on the touchpad works just as you might expect. And we're just going to take yet another trip to Android NZ and have a look at that. And obviously looks great you're looking at of course the desktop chrome browser here via the asus transformer prime and you can see the computer's mouse following the uh, wireless usb mouse that's part of the keyboard here and this is not just for play of course you can get some serious productivity sort of activity done with this uh, things like quick office and so forth for android devices are pretty good as far as they go but they're not going to offer you anything like the sort of editing options and, and yeah, productivity you're going to get out of something like unadulterated microsoft word which of course is what you're looking at here on screen uh, so let's just type a little something into here just to show you that the keyboard input works really well and there's really not any particular lag to speak of. There is of course the problem that I can't type, particularly when I'm trying to watch the screen and type on a keyboard that's sitting on the ground while I crouch behind a tripod, but you get the point that this is working really well. I guess what you can't see here is the fact that this is happening as I type it, um, which is really impressive both from the point of view of the wireless keyboard connection but also how well Splashtop is doing its job in the background here. Uh, so that's what I wanted to show there. Um, the fact that the Logitech unifying gear will work and also just how good RDP is. Of course uh, if the Transformer Prime is just all about productivity and remote desktoping into my laptop computer at home it would be not a lot of fun obviously. So what we've got here is N64 OID, uh, Mario 64 running with one of the high-res te high texture packs that are now available and this is a just a bog standard Logitech USB controller which is plugged into the tablet sitting just over there where it was before and hopefully you can see it's working pretty well and this does of course work with PS3 controllers I've also used my own PS3 controller um, within 64 here and it's just great and as you can see running at 720p with one of these high res texture packs available Mario 64's never look so good on your HD television And these high-res texture packs are available for a few other games, notably of course Zelda The Ocarina of Time, uh, and a few others. And as you can see this is obviously a much better gaming experience than what you're going to have if you're not using an external controller. Just run really close to that bottom so you can see the lovely high res texture on it. But anyway, that's Mario 64 running with a high res texture on the Asus Transformer and of course all connected up to this Transformer 1 USB adapter. Now we're just going to change tack and play something a little bit more modern. So, naturally, what you can see in front of you is Shadowgun THD, so this is the one optimised to Tegra 3 uh, devices, has a few extra particle effects, water effects, but just a, a little bit of a graphical gravy on top of the regular Shadowgun, which of course in the looks department is no slouch either. Now I showed you the Logitech controller before with N64, this time I wanted to show you one of these of course, a PS3 controller which many of you will have lying around at home anyway, and connect this one up. Now I've got this connected to a 5 meter long 
mini USB cable, which of course is perfect for sitting on the couch and playing this on my HD TV. So we're just going to connect that one up, and it should say, with any luck, that the gamepad is connected. Yep. So you can see here, there's the gamepad dialog, which actually doesn't appear in options unless you have one connected. And we should probably just map this one out. So we've mapped out all the controls. And now let's take a look at the second level of Shadow Gun running with a PC controller which we've just mapped. It's going to be a little bit of a load. Suffice to say that it works incredibly well. I've not yet tried 6-axis controller or anything else to let me do this over Bluetooth, which obviously would be even more preferable to USB. Uh, I don't know whether the USB controller still behaves much more accurately with this than Bluetooth controllers did, which is how the older version of Shadow Gun worked. And so we're just coming in the way. Skip that. Get a good fire. I suggest invalidation. And I agree. Let me get a closer look. This shouldn't take long. And let's get this shut down. You can see there's a few extra particle effects of things coming out of the pipes here and so forth. And what you'll see at the bottom here, there's some lovely physics in there. And basically, as I said before, it's a much more console-like experience when you using a external controller on Shadow Gun. I mean this is essentially kind of PS3 quality gaming really. Uh, and as you can see it looks just great on the big screen. Especially now this Tegra HD version with some of these high risk graphics you can see the water rippling and reflecting here which isn't present on the SD version of the game. So running just beautifully and that's with a standard piece of controller paired up over USB. And of course the Logitech one will also work with this. I guess the advantage of the Logitech one is it's still a high quality controller but actually probably comes in at about a third to max or half the price of one of these PS3 controllers. So anyway, that's gaming via an external controller. And now we're just going to move on and show what watching video is like via the Asus Prime and the HD camera. The last thing I wanted to show really was just playing movies via the micro HDMI cable and I've gone back to the uh, wireless Bluetooth mouse to control this uh, because the USB port via the adapter of course has been occupied at this time uh, by a 500 gig portable external hard drive. Uh, now unlike the Galaxy Note and Galaxy Nexus, Galaxy S2, uh, the tablet is actually sufficient to power a portable external drive. And of course because it doesn't share the same port being that it's micro HDMI and a separate port rather than the MHL connection sharing the USB port you can actually use a USB drive while outputting uh, that picture to your television which of course you can't do via an MHL connection so that's just one of those advantages that you have here. And this is the USB disk and if we go here this is a video that was recorded by one of the other editors at Ingrid Z. And you'll see it's playing perfectly well from the drive. Go back to my test videos. I'll show you how some of these look on the big screen as well. So this of course is the Monsters Inc. clip. And looks absolutely fantastic on the big screen here and playing perfectly of course 
Uh, one thing worth noting about that is when it's outputting 1080p video, it does actually output it to the television at 1080p and not at 720p, the resolution of the transformer screen itself. The other thing is that it actually powers down the display, so there's nothing displaying on screen when it's playing these videos. And dice players misbehaving. <laughs> But suffice to say that the video looks absolutely fantastic and play from here. And as I showed, also works with a portable USB drive, which is just fantastic news. A um, much more workable situation than what you have with MHL. And so that's all we've got today. So we've got remote desktop, wireless USB, combined keyboard and mouse, Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, Logitech USB controller, PlayStation 3 USB controller, and of course portable drives and using the HDMI out connection for watching movies which is something I imagine quite a few people will do um, as many people still don't have a television that's capable of playing things like NKVs and DivX so a very very useful thing to be able to have on your tablet so that's uh, NZ Tech Rec signing out for Android NZ